Why should we have to teach according to the curriculum? G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price. Welcome to the vlog, episode number eight. I want to talk about curriculum documents and standards and all those rules for teachers on what they should teach and when they should teach it. Remember when I started teaching, um, older teachers told me of a time when the Department of Education in Queensland, where I teach, used to specify which lessons to teach at which times in the day on each day of the week. So as was explained to me that the Director of Education could look at his clock in his office in Brisbane and know that in every school in the whole state of Queensland, everybody was teaching the same lesson at the same grade level, all at the same time. We moved on from those days, but we still have people with checklists and pens and sets of rules telling us what to teach and when to teach it. Now I should say of course that curriculum documents are very important and they tell us what should we should be aiming for. Teachers shouldn't be made to feel that the curriculum is this gold standard that everybody has to achieve and that everybody has to meet the same standards and um, you know that it's got to be regimented and that people above the teacher can direct the teacher to teach specific things in specific ways and um, my students, when I was a university lecturer, the pre-service teachers going out on practicums, um, at one particular school, they were told very, very clearly what they had to teach and when they had to teach it and the language they had to use and the resources that were used and the school had got the whole thing all packaged up. So individual lessons were pre-planned by the school and would hand it to the student teacher and I was horrified. And so were the students. They, although they were novices, they wanted to spread their wings and try things and, you know, not in an outlandish sort of way, but students should be encouraged to try new ideas and try new approaches and come up with their own resources and their own ways of structuring a lesson and learn how to do the job. But in this school, they weren't allowed to, and they were told they had to teach. And I remember a teacher being told she had to teach a particular lesson, and she had to specifically mention one particular word. I've forgotten what the word was. I actually thought that the word wasn't actually very relevant to the lesson myself as a lecturer in the same subject. But anyway, the school had decided this was the word, the gold standard word that every child had to know. And of course, it was in a piece of assessment. So the student teacher had to teach using that word in her lesson so that it gave the students the maximum chance of success on the test. What a ridiculous idea. I was so disappointed that the student was put under this pressure and that the school thought that this was the right way to go. Let everybody follow the rules. Let everybody teach according to a rule book. Frustrates me no end. As an individual teacher, you, I believe, are a professional. You have professional autonomy up to a certain level. Of course, you're bound by standards and expectations and responsible responsibilities and duties and so on. But in your classroom, you should have the right to decide when to teach, how to teach, how to structure it. Of course you're accountable for the results the students get, but nobody should be saying, you've got to do it this way and you've got to do that. And, you know, treating you like just an employee or a servant or, you know, someone who doesn't really have enough gumption to know what to teach and how to teach it, but has to be told how to teach and, you know, what standards to achieve. And the reason for my passion about this issue is that every child, as we know, as we were taught at university and as everybody keeps reminding us, every child is an individual. Every child is unique. Even if you had a pair of twins in your class, they're not the same. They're uniquely different from every other child and they have unique needs. And therefore we can't just say, here's the set of rules and here's the standard, everybody will learn this the same way. It just doesn't work that way. And in particular, students who are behind the standard, behind the grade level expectation, should be given different material and different teaching. And differentiation is a buzzword for a good reason. Um, 
the children are not all at the same level. We can't possibly teach them as if they're all uniformly at the same level of achievement because they're not. And so we need to vary our teaching and be creative and come up with different ways to meet the needs of each individual student. And if that means that a child in year four is doing work that according to the curriculum is for year two, then so be it. And if they can't do the year two work, then let's give them year one work. And if that doesn't work, then let's go back to prep level, foundation level, kindergarten level, whatever it's called where you are, and let's start there. If the child can't count or can't recognize symbols, why are we trying to teach them long division or something? You know, it's pointless, it really is. Just like students who don't know their times tables and their number facts, they shouldn't be doing algorithms. There's no point. How can they do an algorithm if they've got to use a calculator on the site to find out what six times four is? They may as well use the calculator for the whole thing and abandon algorithms. So I firmly believe that teachers should exercise their professional autonomy, not in an in a irresponsible way, not in a, as an excuse to be lazy, not as a way to get out of teaching what should be taught at a year level, but to take the reins and take um, over the management of how the education is conducted for those students in the class. And of course the students will be tested and of course they'll be assessed and you know the results will be laid out on the table for everybody to see. So as I said it's not an excuse to be lazy but it's also not a way of shirking responsibility but it's a way of taking responsibility for what the students learn and their achievement. And to my mind, that's the best way of helping your students to achieve success. <sighs> so I'm just a little bit frustrated about this. I see more and more people imposing rules on teachers and setting standards and saying, everybody's got to do it this way. And worst of, worst of all, the politician saying, every teacher will teach this and we will set the standards and we will test everybody and we will put pressure on the teachers to make sure they you know, do a better job. Yeah, like that's going to work when you treat them like idiots. So I think education needs an overhaul. It needs new input. It needs new energy and enthusiasm and new minds and new ways of doing things. And it needs teachers who are treated like professionals and teachers who are given the responsibility to, to manage the classroom, manage their behavior, manage their learning, manage the resources, and do the very, 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 very best they can for that particular class, as is their job. That's what they should be doing. So be encouraged. I really do encourage you. I think teachers are the most wonderful people in the world. They are doing possibly the most difficult job in the world, apart from sending men to the moon, or women to the moon. Um, and they deserve the respect of people in society. They deserve respect from parents and politicians and principals and everybody else for the work that they do. And they should be paid a whole lot more as well. I'm sure you agree. So if you've enjoyed this video, I encourage you to let other people know. Give me a thumbs up if you feel inclined. Do subscribe if you haven't been here before. If this is the first of my videos you've watched, if you subscribe, then you'll receive emails from YouTube that will simply say, Peter Price from Professor Pete's Classroom has released a new video. You might like to see it. It's just as simple as that. So that's it for me for this week, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon.